Now, we have been pursuing the woman who gave birth to the son and we tracked her all the way to her place in the earth where she is about to fall away. We see the progression downward toward that. But let's step back for a moment because after the devil is unsuccessful uh, in drowning her, carrying her away, carrying her away in a flood of misinformation, false, uh, and what, what has come to be called alternative truths. Um, when that happened, when, when, when he could not destroy her that way, it said, and the dragon was enraged with the woman, so he gave up the chase for a time because he has another plan. He knows how to trap her. But in the meantime, he refocuses upon her offspring. He said, and a dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, as prophesied in the book of Genesis, the third chapter, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. In the first instance of that, Jesus on the cross revealed God's redemptive plan to reconcile mankind to Himself in in the body of Christ. This plan was executed on the cross. In His death on the cross, Colossians 3 tells us, Jesus broke down the middle wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile and He made of two one new man and so He made peace. The first salvo, as it were, in this war of destroying the works of the devil. One of His principal works is to sow enmity, sow enmity between mankind, between human beings. I am more than a little bit frustrated with the current church's countenancing of racism. In fact, all it tells me is that the current church is primed to go into apostasy because the fundamental message of the cross is how God reconciled the Jew and the Gentile to Himself in one man, namely Christ. Christ is not a representation in the earth of a white hegemony. He's not. That's called delusion. No more than Christ is represented by a black hegemony or an Asian hegemony. Quite the opposite. We are members of one body. Which part of your body is greater than the rest of your body? Especially since the head, the place of the head has already been taken. Christ is the head, in case we forget. 
Christ is the head. That is not a vacant spot in an organizational chart that might be available for some notable. Christ is the head, for He is the head of the body, like the husband is the head of the wife. Christ also is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. That's from the book of Ephesians chapter 5. What has happened to the church, and racism is really just an indication of a more insidious thing, the thing called unbelief and rebellion, the same things that trapped Israel in the desert and caused an entire people in the desert of a certain age to die in the wilderness, falling short of the promise. When this woman is in the desert, it's time for her to be dealt with. And that dealing is to correct all of the ways in which human culture has seeped into and become part of her practice. In the Western world, white culture, white European culture has become the default dominance of the church. And because it has, racism has until now been a casual assumption. What is the, what is the root then of this? It is based in the struggle for daily bread. The economy in which a man, in which a person believes that it's up to them to provide for themselves. So, anyone who threatens one's ability to provide for himself is an enemy. And historically, either enslaving others to provide or conquering others by a superior advantage, whether by force of arms or by structures such as education and the rest of it, politics, the military. These are the things mankind uses to advance kingdoms and empires. And I'm always amused to hear people talk about Western civilization as, and the defense of Western civilization as a defense of the Christian faith. Western civilization has been at war with the Christian faith, with the true faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's given comfort, it's given uh, shelter, to this insidious racism in modern times, or actually since ancient times, the Italian Empire practiced slavery in such a widespread fashion that uh, there was, it was once said that two-thirds of the Roman Empire was comprised of people who were either physically made slaves, taken from their homes, brought uh, into parts of the Roman Empire, or agreements were made with nations to to be servile and to to be in servitude to the Romans. 
probably no greater practitioner in history of slavery than Italians. The British were not to be outdone, however. The British, the Spanish, the Portuguese conflated the expansion of empire with the enslaving of peoples. They considered it um, the, the right of, of people of Anglo-European descent to just enslave populations in the Americas and um, to import populations from Africa as slaves. So don't tell me that Western civilization mirrors the teachings of Christ. It does not. It simply does not. But today, one may well ask, where are the white supremacists normally? Where would you find the white supremacists? Well, you can find them congregated on Sunday mornings in almost any of your local evangelical churches because no hue or cry has been ever raised or consistently so against this assumed cultural preeminence. And I'm always amused when at times I'm in these, some of these conferences that I used to be in <laughs> and I watch uh, some of these well-known white preachers get up and strut their stuff and typically I'll get up after them. When I speak, a hush falls on the audience, typically, because the last thing they expect is the wisdom and counsel of the Holy Spirit to come out of a face that looks like mine. And then they make every excuse. They say, oh, he's really not black. Or, you know, he sounds like an Englishman. <laughs> as, as if that means anything. It's shocking to me how casual racism is in the church. Now, I expect racism in the world. They don't know any better. They're just struggling to survive. And for them, they would be as opposed to a black man as a fellow white man or any other color whom they perceive as being a threat to their ability to supply their own bread. But this Republican Jesus is an absolute offense to God and more than anything else, it signals the velocity at which the evangelical church is accelerating into apostasy. These things that are happening are unveiling things that are of utmost importance now in the world to those who name the name of Christ. I don't hear anybody sounding the alarm. Perhaps it's because of exactly what Paul warned about in his letter to the, to the Thessalonians where he says, you 
are not of the darkness or of the night, that the day should overtake you as a thief. But quite apparently, the majority of those who are claiming to be the followers of Christ have embraced this darkness because it's a natural extension. Hear me. It is the natural maturation of Christian culture that has ignored the fundamental message of the cross while yet claiming to be the proponents of the cross, proponents of the message of the cross. For they see the message of the cross as being this, that Jesus died on the cross to personally save me from my sins and to forgive my sins if I believe in Him so that I could go to heaven when I die. That's their take on the cross. That's not even the main message of the cross, although it is a true message of the cross. It's not the main message. The main message of the cross is this, that God intends to have in the earth a collection of people known as the body of Christ who love one another as the evidence that the same Father who was in the Lord Jesus Christ is in them and as Christ was, as He was in Christ and that that Father loves them as He loved Christ. That's the message of John 17. That and only that is what will cause the world to believe. This emphasis on going to heaven when you die is a red herring, it's a distraction. If you're in the kingdom of God, you are already in the kingdom of heaven. It's the same thing. It's a two-story house. You can only gain access from the ground floor. But if you're in it, when you die, you inevitably go to heaven. But you don't stay in heaven because the story doesn't end in heaven. Christ will bring us with Him as His rule and reign continues and that on a renewed earth. So we've been hoodwinked by this gospel. The continuing gospel is first how God reconciles mankind to Himself in Christ, then grows them up into an accurate representation of Himself in the form of a mature man. And then God puts Himself on display in all of His glory in that man so that the world might believe and come to Christ and by Christ come to have access to the Father and be reconciled to the Father in Christ. This whole message is one of reconciliation, that God is in Christ reconciling. It's not about avoiding going to hell, but That has been the foundational message of all of Calvinism in any form of it, or for that matter in Lutheranism and all the present iterations of that, the issue of predestination. God foresaw you in Christ from before the foundations of the world. That's not about being in heaven or being on the earth, it's being assembled to Christ. It's the message of propitiation by which you are included in Christ and viewed as the Son to the Father. This gives the Father a place to function in the earth. Racism 
is the craft of Satan himself to put a brother against a brother, as in the case of Cain and Abel, to put a man against his wife, as the case of Adam and Eve. It serves only the devil. And it's time that anybody that has a conviction as to what the truth actually is, stands for the truth. Now, God isn't reconciling unregenerated man to anybody, to himself or anybody else, because the the unregenerated is condemned already. The only message we have for the world is reconciliation first to God in Christ and then to each other. If they will not hear that, we're never going to come together as a human race. The only coming together is by enforced means and that is what this seven heads and ten horned kingdom is all about because it is the ultimate craft of the enemy, exploiting the fear of man that he cannot buy or sell and support himself by his own activities. Now these messages are extremely powerful, these deceptions are extremely powerful in the way that they shape the thinking of mankind. If you believe that your survival depends upon agreeing to terms and conditions of a global kingdom, if you believe that, there is no way for you to be reconciled to God in Christ. If you have a culture that has casually uh, propagated the view that a certain group of people, particularly now for our time and in our, perp- in our days, that white, being white gives an advantage because white culture is dominant and therefore it enables a better chance of survival. If you believe that, you are deceived the enemy is working entirely within that framework to capture you and if you're a churchgoer who believes that, you're already on your way to apostasy. The only only culture that is preeminent in the earth is the culture of Christ because that's the only thing that God will support. This mixture of God and country, this mixture of God and Western culture, even this mixture of God and American, white American culture, is the greatest danger to a remnant of people in the earth today. The time will come when this debauched woman, this apostate church will be labeled properly as to who she is. She is a prostitute, a harlot who pretends to be a wife in the way she services kings, but her service of kings is only in the hope of being clothed with purple and scarlet and being adorned with jewels, the indications that you have a seat at the table of kings. Because kings need the affirmation of spiritual things, because important people cannot rely only upon their souls to find rest and peace. They will never have enough money, they will never have enough power, they will never have enough influence 
no matter how much they have, they want more. And that's just the indication of the insecurity of that. So if you're at the top of the societal heap, if you're at the absolute top of the societal heap, you still need the assurance that comes from a connection to God. And that's why the preachers and that's why the church is sought out by the kings. But that is a slippery slope. Prophetically, such a thing is clearly mapped out in Scripture. You don't have to guess where it's going. And eventually, the cry will come to the people of God to come out of the mother of harlots, to come out of the apostate church, come out of her, my people, as Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, this woman with the name Babylon, has fallen because no longer remains, no longer is there even a remaining of the glory of God upon her that she once had when she was clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and carrying the child whose destiny was to rule the nations. So, we know where it's going. Now, when the dragon does not prevail against the woman, he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Okay. So there's the woman and there's her offspring, distinguished from each other. And the rest of her offspring are those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's not a Republican Jesus. That is not a harlot. That is not a racist. Those are those who have the mind of Christ and will not make excuses for a broken culture and will not seek to benefit from their abilities to work that broken culture for their benefit. Listen, I'm sounding a warning. I am saying that the time is coming when everyone who has played fast and loose and turned a blind eye, there is a price to be paid. You don't get away with it. And this isn't about the final judgment. This is about judgment coming upon a harlot whose mindset you might have embraced. You don't have time to do whatever you want to. You can't pretend that these things are not written. You can't say, I never heard anybody, I didn't do this, that, or the other. That doesn't matter, that's not an argument that will wash. What you have to do is reclothe your mind with the truth and cast down these strongholds by renewing your mind. <clears throat> if you seek to benefit from it, ignorance of it, especially now that you've heard, will not work for you. These things are all moving to a point of an absolute arrest. And the tragedy of it is unspeakable. We'll continue in this discussion when I return. I'm Sam Solon. I'll see you when I do. Bye-bye.